Yo, so guys, welcome back to another video. This is another oversimplified reaction. The other ones have seemed to gone down like an absolute tree, and people want more. And I'm down to do more because I really enjoy the the videos that he does. He's got a certain style, and I really enjoy it. Like he mixes history of comedy, and it makes it a lot more sort of like interesting to watch and learn about. And this one is the American Civil War oversimplified part one. This is actually a very long video. This is nearly 30 minutes long. So it's gonna be a long um, reaction, and there's a part two as well. So from that, I'm assuming there's a lot to like sort of go through with this. But yeah, I mean, I appreciate the suggestions and I appreciate the support. If you want more of this, leave a like. If you're new to the channel, subscribe because there's a lot of new people coming to the channel through these reactions, and I appreciate that. Like, there's gonna be more of these to come without a doubt. And yeah, people are enjoying this. But let's give this a watch and check this out because I'm gonna be honest, I'm not clued up on much about the American Civil War. That's just how it is. Like, I'm not very good when it comes to sort of cutting history involving other countries, other than sort of like a few things. I, I mean, I remember learning about the World War, but that's just really it. Like, we don't, like, in the UK, we don't really tend to learn about other, t other, other countries' history unless it involves us, even though, like, the, the revolution did involve us. We probably didn't look at it as much. I mean, I mean, we probably did at certain points, but I just can't fully remember it. But we didn't look at it because we lost it, if you know what I mean. Like, we only like showing the history where we look good with just, like, the sort of the way the country does certain things. But maybe we're involved in this as well. Maybe there's going to be some certain points in this where I remember actually learning about it. But we check, we're check. going to check this out. If you're going to enjoy, I said this already, but please leave a like. And, yeah, let's give this a watch, man. This video was made possible by NordVP. Get your money. Get your money, bro. Get your money. Simplified merch today, along with a very honest new character pin. Link in the description below. <laughs> Fuck you know. Okay, Mrs. Lincoln. This, this is, is Abraham it. Lincoln, One last right? Push and we're done. <laughs> <laughs> That's Abraham Lincoln. Oh my god. <laughs> Nine months, four days ago, my father brought forth upon my mother himself and gave to her a child conceived in a shack in Kentucky. How long and is this? to the proposition that I will drink num nums from a bottle and do little poo poos in my pants for the next two to three years. Now, what does it babies do again? <laughs> oh, yeah. What the fuck? I am not touching that. <laughs> that was so off putting, bro. He's got like a seven year old guy's head with a baby's body. What the fuck? Abraham Lincoln grew up with his relatives <laughs> Still. in Kentucky, eventually moving to Indiana and finally Illinois. He read a lot of books, worked a lot of jobs, wrote some questionable poetry, and finally entered the law profession. Despite being okay. self-taught, he turned out to be a pretty clever and astute lawyer. In one case, a guy claimed he witnessed a murder at night, and Lincoln was like, how could you have seen anything in the dark? There was a bright full moon. A what? A bright full moon. Can you say that again, please? There was a bright full moon. A dim half moon? No, a bright full moon. That's funny. You know according something here, to this almanac, there was a dim half moon that night, which makes you a liar. Uh, well... Well, I got a bright full moon for y'all right here. <laughs> now that's what I call a rebuttal. Oh, for fuck's sake. Lincoln and his cheekbones weren't only interested in law, however. He also dabbled in the world of politics, serving as a legislator in both local and national assemblies. And what a time it was. Not even a hundred years after the founding fathers wrote, all men are created equal, politicians were already asking, yeah, but what does that mean exactly? It means all men. Yeah, but... What does that mean exactly? And not just that. <laughs> States' rights versus the federal government. What are the executive powers of the president? Is cereal a soup? The founding fathers left some of these questions perhaps a little too open to interpretation. What? And Is the cereal biggest question of them all was slavery. Okay. An ugly mark on what should have been a revolutionary new nation based on liberty and democracy. Thomas Jefferson had written a condemnation of slavery in the Declaration of Independence. But out of fear of losing southern states' support, it was removed. Hey guys, do you think leaving this a little vague will create any unforeseen problems in the future? Cannonball! And those unforeseen problems were now beginning to rear their ugly heads. As the nation developed, the North and the South developed along two very different lines, and two very different cultural identities emerged. Northern cities began rapidly industrializing, while the Southern climate allowed for large plantations of labor-intensive crops. As a result, one half of the country didn't rely on slaves, while the other half oh, wow. had economically dependent on them. In I... 1793, Eli Whitney's cotton gin caused this... I did not have any idea about that. See, that's something completely new to me. I've learned something there. I mean, 
That's wild. And I mean, is this yellow sort of like parts of the US that haven't like been claimed yet? Or like where like, I'm guessing these are going to come into fruition throughout this video. Like they're going to sort of make new states kind of thing. But I'm not sure because again, I'm not too clued, clued up on US history. Like you see this, like these states here, they all seem huge. I guess they sort of split them up at certain points here. Like, especially like the top, the top ones, the top blue one. Because I swear there's loads of small states in that area now. But we're going to see that. Slave we're going to see the south that. To explode. While in the north, a growing abolitionist movement was taking root. A general mistrust began to develop between the north and the wow. south. As northerners felt the south were hell-bent on expanding slavery, and fear spread throughout the south that the north wanted to take their slaves away. In 1819, there were 11 free states and 11 slave states. A perfect balance. A happy medium. A harmonious relationship. Hey guys, nice to meet you. I'm Missouri, and I would like to be the 23rd then. state. Hey buddy, welcome to the nation. We'll be happy to accept you as a free state. Oh no you don't. You're trying to get one over on us. Missouri's gonna be a slave state. Okay, listen, why don't we just ask Missouri what it wants to be, and we slave state- <laughs> Fuck's sake. Well, then, uh, allow me to introduce to you the newest, freshest state on the scene, Maine. Hey, you can't do that, and you can't have any more slave states above this line. What? The issue of slavery is solved, and it will never come up again. A few years later, it yeah, came yeah. up again. You see, <laughs> as America sake. expanded westward, each new state or territory that was added threatened to upend the delicate balance between the slave and free. So here's a question that's not really relevant to this video too much, but like, how he says like, new parts of the US was discovered, was that like, was this initially then like Mexico? Because this is Mexico below, isn't it? Is this yellow thing Mexico and then the US just sort of took over? Like, what is the... Maybe I should look into this, like the sort of the history behind this, because... This is something that I'm not like I'm not up to date with whatsoever. This is like I'm not too sure about like what the case is here. I know like one of these states here is called like New Mexico. There's California there, there's Texas there, so like that's interesting because that's all in you know, I assume that is Mexico but at that point. Okay, expanded westward. Each new Just state or bigger. territory that was added threatened to upend the delicate balance between the slave and free states. If one faction managed to outnumber the other, it could gain an easy majority and force its own ideals wow. on the opposing side, leaving a huge portion of the population feeling spiteful and oppressed. Imagine it was For a while, the compromises US. kicked the can down the road and kept the volatile balance in check as new free and slave states were roughly added in pairs. But then one loudmass state just had to barge in and ruin everything as usual. <laughs> the addition of Texas saw the United States enter into a war Jesus, with Mexico, man. which they won, gaining a huge amount okay. of land out west and creating even more problems. That hey guys, answers my nice question. To meet you. I'm California, and I would like to become the 31st state. Hey buddy, welcome to the nation. We'll be happy to accept you as a southern slave state. Oh no you don't. You're trying to get one over on us. California's gonna be a free state. Okay, listen. Why don't we just ask California what it wants to be, and we can free state. <laughs> well, then, uh, allow me to introduce to you the territories of New Mexico and Utah, able to freely vote for slavery themselves. Hey, you can't do that. And we can enter Northern Territory anytime we want to recapture escaped slaves. What? Wow. The issue of slavery is solved, and it will never come up again. A few years later, it came, came up again. again. <laughs> In 1854, a Democratic senator from Illinois wanted to build a really cool choo-choo train here and proposed that the territories of Kansas and Nebraska be created open to slavery, even though they were clearly above the Missouri Compromise Line. Obviously, the northern states were like, hell no. But the southern Democrats who controlled Congress at the time were like, well, if you love liberty and democracy so much, then you should let them vote on whether slavery should be legal or not. And so it was. Huge numbers of pro and anti-slavery settlers rushed to Kansas to sway the vote in their favor. And while they were all there, they began to beat the crap out of each other. One of those settlers was a man named John Brown, a former businessman who failed at just about everything he tried and went <laughs> arguably insane. He was a radical abolitionist and dedicated much of his life to the Underground Railroad and freeing slaves. One night, in revenge for an earlier raid by pro-slavery forces, he and his sons killed a number of pro-slavery settlers in the territory, helping to kickstart years of violence known as Bleeding Kansas. Oh, wow. Kansas and Nebraska both eventually voted in favor of outlawing slavery. But from here, the tension began to grow at a rapid pace. In 1852, author Harriet Beecher Stowe penned Uncle Tom's Cabin, a best-selling novel that exposed the terrible cruelty of slavery to the world. Oh, how awful. How morally corrupt a nation must be to allow such things to happen. Your Majesty, what should we do about all the starving children working in the coal mines? Oh, no. <laughs> That's actually kind of funny, because, I mean, I'm assuming people... Actually, maybe not, because, again, I'm not... I wasn't too clued in this, but, like... 
this see this is stuff that we did learn about in the UK like the things I mean if you've seen Oliver Twist you probably know what it is about to be honest but like kids being used to like clean chimneys I, I think about it now I'm like how was it even legal the world was so backwards so fucking backwards in so many ways like it's wild to me how these were all things that were allowed it's crazy I think in 1854, the Republican Nothing. Party was formed, and Abraham Lincoln emerged as a leading figure. Southern Democrats viewed the new Republican Party with mistrust, believing it to be radical and abolitionist. In 1856, a politician named Charles Sumner gave a speech in Congress, calling out slave-owning Democrats with fiery language. If slavery was a woman, she'd be an ugly one, and the senator from South Carolina would like to boink her. Representative Brooks, do you have a rebuttal? Oh, I have a rebuttal, all right. Yeah, here's a rebuttal for you. Oh, come on. Surely this isn't allowed. Hmm, I don't know. I'll have to consult the rule book. Hmm, I can't find anything about caning a political opponent, but it says here I'm not allowed to wear women's underwear. Uh-oh. <laughs> News of the violence on the Senate floor took the nation by storm. Southern slave owners sent Representative Brooks new canes to replace his now broken one. And on the floors of Congress, the politicians fuck? carried weapons in self-defense, oh which is never a good sign. In 1857, the Supreme Court ruled in the Dred Scott case that all people of African descent, slave or free, could not be citizens and therefore could not sue for their own freedom under any circumstances, undoing Jesus, years of man. progress with the strike of a gavel. Now, within all this bitter debate over slavery, there were many nuances. North versus South, Republican versus Democrat, states versus the federal government. But let's strip all of that away. For four million individuals living in America, this wasn't about political intrigue or party alignment. It was about the basic human right to be free. Men, women, and children were stolen from their homelands and brought to the American continent, where for generations they were considered to be property, forced to live in poverty, and work from sunrise to sunset. Plantation overseers did whatever they felt was necessary to get the most out of their slaves. Punishments were often barbaric. Families were regularly separated, and parents could often only watch oh, as their children auctions? were auctioned off, never to be seen. See, that's just like when you truly realize how fucked it is, man. I remember seeing a series, I mentioned it in one of my last videos on Oversimplified, the Roots series. We watched it in school. So I did actually sort of see parts of like, um, that could be kind of related to this. And I was astonished when I saw they just auctioned people off like this, like they're, like they're just... Like, like their property, like that's literally how they were treated. And it's just like, you're, you're taking kids away from families as if like you would do with like dogs, like with their puppies, like when people get like take their puppies and stuff. I can't get my head around that. I can't wrap my head around how the people who controlled this could sleep at night. It's astonishing to me. It's absolutely it's like, it's fucked, but here we are. Every country has its dark history, right? Like I can't speak of the UK. Fuck, I mean, where do I get started? We've got some terrible things that we've done, man. It's just sad though, isn't it? Like, a few years back, like, hundreds of years ago, the human race was a different thing, man. And again, thousands of slaves took the treacherous risk of running away, and abolitionists in the North helped many escape via the Underground Railroad as bounty hunters entered the North to chase them down. Oh, wow. Leading figures within the abolitionist movement included many significant free black men and women. But it's important to note Hi, that for man. many of the anti-slavery white guess. individuals in the North, opposition to slavery was often an economic issue, not a moral one, as many worried large plantations would take their lands and livelihoods away. Abraham Jeez, Lincoln man, knew that sad. slavery was a moral evil, and he regularly spoke out against it in powerful speeches that helped him rise through the ranks of the new Republican Party. He lamented at the hypocrisy of a great American nation meant to stand as a shining beacon of freedom while also enslaving four million men, women, and children. He most famously declared in 1858 that a house divided against itself cannot stand, that one day slavery in America would end. However, even Lincoln was cautious in his opposition. He didn't want to outlaw it entirely, but simply prevent its expansion so that given enough time, he believed it would naturally die out. Thankfully, history would force his hand. In October 1859, one abolitionist decided he'd try to single-handedly take down slavery by force. Who would be crazy enough to even attempt such a thing? Uh, this guy it's again. our good friend, John Brown. He planned to seize arms from an armory in the town of Harper's Ferry, free the slaves there, and continue south, inciting a major slave uprising along the way. A noble cause, a bad plan, 
and terrible execution. Brown's men took the armory and some hostages, but were quickly surrounded by one Robert E. Lee and his U.S. Marine. Brown was captured, and a couple of months later, he was executed for treason. Northerners oh, sympathized wow. with Brown, but Southerners were like, you see this? They're coming for us. Soon, there'll be a million John Browns. A million John Browns? What on earth are you thinking about? The John Brown farm? <laughs> Fuck's yeah, sake. me too. To make matters worse, new northern free states meant now the southern states really were outnumbered, and they were beginning to feel bitterly spiteful and oppressed. Further fear began to spread in the south when news We'd like to win the Republican nomination. had just secured the Republican Party nomination for president. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, mostly well liked among anti slavery northerners, had made some of the most powerfully worded speeches against slavery of any politician at the time. And now there was a chance that he and his cheekbones could become president. For the South, that would be too much. In the 1860 election, Lincoln's name didn't even appear on the ballot in 10 southern states. Jesus. But much to their horror, so they tried when rigging the final it, results and came it didn't in, work. Did Lincoln it? had won by a They tried rigging it and it still didn't work. You love to see it, man. An Absolutely love to see it. Landslide. Lincoln himself. What is this going round? What is this yellow thing? Can you guys see this? You can't. I've got this little yellow ring going around the whole thing. I'm so confused. That's irrelevant to the whole video, but that's been there the whole time. And I'm so sort of like, I don't know what the hell it is. Tried to calm their fear. How many times do I have to tell you I'm not going to take away your slaves? Yeah, right, honest Abe. We've had enough of you northerners. We're going to go form our own country. You can't do that. Why not? Well, if, if you had won the election, would it be okay for us to leave? Of course not. Well, why not? Because that's not how victim mentality works. <laughs> Many states felt that when they joined the Union, they always withheld the right to leave it whenever they pleased. Many people living in 19th century America often felt more loyalty to their state than to the oh, nation. Wow. And now, with the South feeling like it had lost its voice in the federal government, they were out of here. South Carolina was the first to go. And over a My period God. of six months, one by one, 11 slave states officially seceded from the Union with just four contested border states opting to remain. That the seceding wild. states issued a number of official documents justifying their secession. South Carolina proclaimed that it was northern states' hostility to slavery that rendered the federal government illegitimate. Mississippi declared that their position was thoroughly identified with the institution of slavery. And in a speech, the Confederate vice president stated that the new Confederate government rested upon what he called the great truth of racial inequality. Revered American generals, such as Robert E. Lee, opted to side with their states over the Union. And with all the chaos, one New York lawyer wrote that rather than a bald eagle, America's national bird should be a debilitated chicken. And hey, <laughs> I kind of like that. One man, watching the crisis unfold, knew it would be his job to solve it. Lincoln was just about to hop on a train and become the president of the United States of America. Hey man, you're hella ugly. Grow a beard or something to hide that face. Hmm. Good idea. The classic beard, yeah? Eh, the classic still beard. Ugly. <laughs> still ugly. Fuck already so. underway, Lincoln had to travel to Washington, D.C. under heavy disguise and protection. All along the way, he received stacks of threatening letters. May the hand of the devil strike you down. You are destroying this country. Damn you, every breath you take. Love from... Grandma? At his inauguration <laughs> speech, Lincoln once again reiterated that, No, I do not want to take away anyone's slaves. But for Lincoln, he did want to preserve the Union. He declared secession to be nothing but an illegitimate rebellion. In your hands and not in mine, he said, is the momentous issue of civil war. You can have no conflict without being yourselves the aggressors. We are not enemies, but friends. It was clear Lincoln was ready and willing to get freaky and open up a can of Scatman John if he had to. Whether he had the support of the people, however, was in question. In the end, it was the Confederates that fired the first shot. As they seceded, the Confederate states began seizing federal U.S. property throughout the South. Off the coast of Charleston, South Carolina, was one such federal property, Fort Sumter, held by a measly, undersupplied U.S. force. The Confederate militia there demanded the fort surrender, a wow. request which was quickly denied. And any remaining hope for a peaceful solution to the secession crisis probably then died when the Confederates did this. The Battle of Fort Sumter is considered to be the beginning of the American Civil War. Many of the Confederates there also considered it to be the end of the American Civil War. They hoped old Abe would just sigh and say, okay, you win. 
Unfortunately for them, Lincoln no, actually uh -huh. said, you're about to get a roundhouse to the face. Lincoln How sent out the call for 75,000 volunteers, and men signed up in droves, hopeful for some adventure and good old-fashioned F-U-N. In the new Confederate Fuck. capital of Richmond, Virginia, Confederate President Jefferson Davis and his cheekbones had also sent out the call for 100,000 men. As ever, both sides hoped for a quick end to the war. Is it over yet? No, Jimmy, it's been one week. Is it over now? No! How about now? If you ask that one more time, I swear I will turn this army around and you'll all have to go back home to your wives and children. <laughs> but in particular, the South knew the conflict would pose a bit of a challenge. I love this. I love this so much. A population of only 5 million against 22 million in the North. If you count us 4 million slaves, you'd have 9 million. Great idea. Hand these rifles out to all the moon. Wait a minute. You almost had me there. The problem for Lincoln was that many of his top generals were getting old and were being a bit too cautious. The commanding general was a man named Winfield Scott, a veteran of the Mexican-American War, and by now, he was too fat to even uh, mount a horse. Where the hell is okay, arms? Chess, we need to come up with oh, a plan. I've just realized none of them have we arms. wait for the Confederates to come and apologize. Maybe we should all sit in a circle and discuss I'm our done. feelings. Oh no, do! Nowhere into New Jersey worked for me. Oh no, he does have arms. What the fuck? <laughs> okay, I'll find it that just forget anything I just said there. Let me just go back to a few seconds so I can hear what it's saying. Okay, Chad. We need to come <laughs> up so with a plan. Dumb. Hit me. We could wait for the Confederates to come and apologize. Maybe we should all sit in a circle and discuss our feelings. Crossing the Delaware into New Jersey worked for me. Those are all terrible ideas. And you. Wrong video. Hey, I'm the greatest president in the history of this nation. Yeah, we'll see about that, dingus. Eventually, Lincoln's generals came up with a multi-pronged strategy. First, a blockade would cut off and starve the south of supplies by sea. Secondly, taking control of the Great Mississippi River would sever the south's economic artery while splitting it in two. And finally, a main Union force in the east would move south and take the Confederate capital, ending the war. Bada boom, bada bing. Skirmishes began to break out across the nation, and the Union army in the east began to move south towards Richmond. Everything seemed to be going well until they reached Manassas, where they came upon a large Confederate force. It's almost like they were waiting for us. How did they know? As it turned out, spies in DC had sent a coded message to the Confederates warning of the invasion. Did you use NordVPN? What the heck is this little this little segue? Nord yeah. VPN. I'm so glad you at. Get your money, bro. I'll skip this, but get your money, man. I'd love to see that. Brother's making his peas. Batman <gasps> and the NordVPN.com slash oversimplified. And as always, you'll be supporting my channel. So thank you. Now where were we? Oh yeah. Secession. Fat Man and the Union invasion into Virginia. The two sides encountered each other at Manassas and both geared up for the first major battle of the Civil War, the first battle of Bull Run. The Confederates rapidly brought in support by a rail and the two sides were about equal in numbers. However, oh, wow. they were also equally inexperienced. A large number of civilians also rode out by carriage from DC to picnic on the nearby hills and watch the excitement unfold. What? That is wild. People just watching it as if it's just like the cinema. That is crazy. I mean, any forms of entertainment, right? Hopefully they, they don't end up getting hurt because, I mean, probably was people who were doing this who ended up getting killed, right? But, I mean, that's just how it was, isn't it? Nobody seemed to quite understand how destructive this war was going to be. The Union forces pulled a flanking maneuver to hit the Confederates on their left, and the two sides fired on each other in rows. Farm families living in the area were forced to flee the fighting, including a man named Wilmer McLean. Hurry up, Martha! There's a war out here! The more you tell me to hurry up, the slower I will go! The Union force saw initial success pushing the Confederates back to Henry Hill. But one as of yet fairly unknown General Thomas Jackson had arrived, and he took a defensive position, standing firm like a stone wall, holding the Union Army off, and finally sending them running back to Washington, D.C. With heavy casualties, the sobering reality Jesus. of war hit both sides hard, and the North, having just lost the first major battle, had to face the serious wild. prospect that they may not actually win this war. President Lincoln, General Jackson whipped us so hard, the Confederates are calling him Stonewall Jackson. Wait, that's why they're calling him that? Not because he looks like he ran face first into a stone wall? <laughs> Worse yet, the North had also lost the first major battle out west, giving away control of southwest Missouri. All of this was terrible news for Abraham Lincoln, especially since many of his generals and cabinet already didn't have much respect for him. They felt he was incapable of running a war because he seemed a bit like your friendly old grandpa. He famously loved a long-winded story and a good pun. I've been so busy, my wife is missing me. 
but her aim is starting to improve. <laughs> but deep down, Few realized he could also be incredibly shrewd. <laughs> oh, Abe, you're so funny. Funny how? Funny like I'm a clown? Uh, Abe, I was just... No, no, funny how? Like I'm here to amuse you? During the war, Lincoln committed acts that were viewed by some as impeachable. His administration suppressed the free media from printing articles sympathetic towards the South. Some Southern sympathizers were even arrested without a trial. Lincoln's criticizers began accusing him of being a tyrant. But to quote the man himself, Hey, it's war, baby. What are you gonna do? <laughs> by the end of 1861, with things already looking bad for the North, Abolitionists such as Frederick Douglass couldn't believe that the Union Army weren't enlisting black men. He continued to put pressure on Lincoln to make the war about emancipation. Mr. President, it's time to make the war about emancipation. Hmm, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. The feathers are already ruffled. But Lincoln, hanging on to hope for a quick end to the conflict, continued to fight only for the preservation of the Union. It wow. was decided, however, that escaped slaves from the Confederacy could be held as enemy contraband, and many of these men were put to work bolstering the Union's infrastructure and supply lines. Hoping to get things moving, Lincoln made young General George McClellan the new commanding general, and McClellan began to train up his men. He thought a lot of himself, however, and believed he was going to be the nation's great savior. And like many others, he didn't approve of the president's handling of the war. On one occasion, Lincoln went to McClellan's house to meet with him, but McClellan was late returning home. He kept the president waiting, and when he finally got there, he just straight up went to bed. Now that's what I call disrespectful. <laughs> McClellan talked the talk, but could he walk the walk? No. Like Lincoln's other generals, McClellan was maddeningly cautious. Hey man, could you move south and attack the enemy? What? Are you crazy? What if they have a big scary army down there? They probably do. Uh, yeah, what? probably. Oh my gosh. McClellan worried that he did not have the numbers he needed to fight effectively. What if they have like 10,000 men? Okay, no problem. We'll get you 20,000 men. Well, what if they have 30,000 men? I'll need 40. Okay, you can have 40. <laughs> well, what if they have 50? I'll need 60. Lincoln tried, but it was <laughs> all in vain. McClellan would not make a move for the rest of the year. The North's one saving grace for now was a general out west fighting in Kentucky and Tennessee. General Ulysses S. Grant, cool, collected, methodical, and a big fan of whiskey. His chief of staff took it upon himself to keep Grant sober. One officer said that Grant habitually wore an expression as though he were determined to drive his head through a brick wall and was about to do it. And that determination led him to score a number of key victories when others around him were failing. At the Battle of Fort Donaldson, Grant was like, why does Stonewall Jackson get a cool nickname and I don't? I want a cool nickname. Sir, the Confederates say they're ready to surrender and want to know your terms. No terms, just unconditional surrender. Hey, unconditional surrender Grant. That's a pretty cool nickname, right? Guys, right? Later in April 1862, the Confederates launched a sudden attack on Grant's army at Shiloh, but the determined, unconditional surrender Grant threw his lines at the rebels and sent them running. The battle resulted in the heaviest casualties in U.S. history so far. And despite God, his damn, victory, 4, Grant 000. found himself under fire. Oh, you have to get rid of Grant. Why? Didn't he win? Yes, but he just threw his men at the enemy. Isn't that the point? Also, he's a loony drunk. Well, what does he like to drink? I believe whiskey, sir. Then send him more. Lincoln watched as his cabinet did nothing but bicker, and his generals did nothing. But then, worst of all, personal tragedy struck. Lincoln's young son, Willie, very much loved by the president, died of typhoid fever oh, wow. at the age of 11. Lincoln was a I sensitive man and was heavily affected by the loss. His wife was inconsolable. But one of Lincoln's greatest traits, what made him such a great leader, was in the darkest of times, with composure and determination, he kept moving forward. He knew it was his responsibility to hold himself and his family together. And by doing so, he hoped to hold the nation together. And he had had it with McClellan's in action. Lincoln decided he was going to take control. In March 1862, Lincoln firmly ordered McClellan to once again move south towards Richmond. McClellan insisted instead they move by sea to the Virginia Peninsula and attack Richmond from the southeast. Yes, said Lincoln. Okay, anything. Lincoln held on to some of McClellan's Just do something. to defend D.C. from a nearby Stonewall Jackson wreaking havoc in the Shenandoah Valley, and he sent McClellan south. McClellan landed on the peninsula, and he began to move inland. He came up against a small Confederate army that had dug in at Yorktown. McClellan vastly outnumbered the force, but it's said that Confederate General Magruder deceived McClellan by cleverly maneuvering his smaller force and making McClellan believe he faced a huge army. No, you have way more men than them. Move forward. No. 
McClellan settled in for a month-long siege, giving time for Johnston to move south from Manassas and Magruder time to retreat. When he finally entered the city and found it deserted, he declared it a victory, calling his Fox success State. brilliant. Then, after meeting some resistance at Williamsburg, McClellan moved to within just 20 miles of Richmond, his armies able Wee. to hear the church bells ringing in the enemy capital. You still outnumber them. Go give them hell. No. McClellan once again held back, moving slowly and defensively, and with his army split in two, the Confederates saw an opportunity to strike back. McClellan's advance was halted, and now the Confederates pulled an ace out of their sleeve. General Lee, you're up. Do you think we should evacuate Richmond? No, Mr. President, no need. General Robert E. Lee, one of the most brilliant military commanders of the time, was now in charge. One of his biggest strengths was his ability to read the mind of his enemy, and he knew McClellan was cautious and weak. After moving Stonewall Jackson south to join him, and even though he had a smaller army, Lee hit McClellan in a series of fast-paced, close combat battles that had McClellan spooked. McClellan retreated the Union army back again and again, oh, he's and gone, again mate. escaping the peninsula and returning to DC. Wow. Lee had defeated McClellan, and the campaign had failed. Well, that was a major success. This guy is pissing me off, and I don't even know him. He's getting on my nerves. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's how he was as a person, like... That's how they're portraying him because that's probably what that's how he was, but he's agitated me, you know. Success? Tell me exactly actually what agitated was me. about that. Well, we successfully retreated. You lost. I didn't lose. I merely failed to win. <laughs> Things just kept I'm using that. I think like whenever like whenever I do something like I lose in a game of FIFA or like whatever. I didn't lose, I just merely failed to win. That's it, man. That's the saying, I'm nicking that. Looking I love that. for the north. That's At what least you say. The had seen some success, capturing a number of key port cities, notably when they steamrolled past Confederate forts to take New Orleans. And speaking of the Navy, both sides had begun using ironclads. So that's pretty cool. But in the East, okay. they still so weren't having any luck. Mention. After McClellan's disastrous campaign, Lincoln briefly sent out one General John Pope to attack Northern Virginia. Hey man, just checking in. How's it going? <laughs> well, the Confederates kicked my butt at Cedar Mountain. Then they raided my camp and ran off with my money and clothes. Also, I appear to have been wedgied. <laughs> Lee defeated Pope at yet another battle at Bull Run, in which nearby farm families once again here got caught again. up in the fighting. Hurry up, Martha! There's another war out here! I'm waiting for my hair to dry! <laughs> Wilmer McLean, sick of war, moved his family south, where he knew the war would definitely, absolutely, never touch him again. But Lincoln had <laughs> That's good foreshadowing. To European oh, powers, man. in particular the UK, were looking increasingly Wait. like they may intervene diplomatically. Wait, Absolutely never touch him again. But Lincoln had yet another problem to contend with. European powers, in particular the UK, were looking increasingly like they may intervene diplomatically oh, on the side fucks. of the Confederates. They were missing their precious. The UK love to get involved in things that shouldn't involve them, don't they? They love to get themselves involved. God supply damn. of southern cotton because of the Union blockade. And they wanted to see wait so we're actually wanting to back the south oh wow i see i didn't see we don't learn these things probably for a reason they want to try and give a country a good rep like i wish we did get taught about this sort of stuff that's completely new to me i did not have any sort of idea that was the case the swift conclusion to the war the tension between America and Great Britain had been increasing, especially after Confederate diplomats were discovered on a British ship. Now, after McClellan's failure to take Richmond, the UK declared it impossible for the North to win. Lincoln needed something Jesus, to prevent Europe what? from getting involved, and after more petitioning from abolitionists, he decided maybe the time was finally right to make the war about ending the institution he hated, slavery. If the North had a noble cause to fight for, Europe would be less likely to intervene. But Lincoln and his cabinet knew before they could declare some. See, I like that he did that. But it's kind of sad that they had to do that because, like, because of like the threat from Europe or whatever. I mean, it makes sense. It's just kind of sad that that wasn't the initial thing. But I guess that's just how they sort of panned out. As radical as emancipation, they needed a victory, especially now that the Confederates were about to go on the attack. Aware that he had a limited number of men and supplies, Crocs. Lee now hoped what that if he could fuck? just threaten Washington, D.C. militarily, he would gain Europe's recognition and crush Northern morale in time for the midterm elections, forcing the North to negotiate. With confidence at an all-time high, for the first time, Robert E. Lee invaded the North. But on September 13th, the North finally had some luck. Oh boy, it's my lucky day! A cigar in a field. Hey, what's this wrapped around it? Oh my <laughs> gosh! That's oh, right, uh -huh. the North had discovered General Lee's battle plans wrapped around some cigars. And in them, they saw that Lee had split up his forces. 
McClellan headed out from DC, and the two sides met in the Battle of Antietam, a crucial battle that would decide the course of the war. It saw the most vicious fighting to date, and still remains the single bloodiest day in American history. Oh my god, so the highest single day casualties. More than Pearl Harbor? What? D-Day. 9-11. That is... Oh my god, that is astonishing. Jesus, so this must have been... But I'm, I'm curious as to how many deaths there must have been. I assume they're going to touch upon that soon. But for once, the North came out victorious, and Lee was forced to retreat. He's on the run. Chase him down and finish him off. No. <laughs> you know what, old buddy? Old Come on. Pal? You're fired. Let's the go. The North had won their crucial victory. Lincoln breathed a huge sigh of relief, and with that win, he was prepared to take a huge step. On September 22nd, the Emancipation Proclamation was issued. In January, all slaves held in the Confederate States would be, as far as the US government was concerned, officially free. Throughout the North, free black men and women rejoiced, knowing that if the North were to win, their brothers and sisters would no longer be held in bondage. The proclamation also had the intended effect on Europe, who were not willing to oppose a pledge to end slavery. Okay, okay. An outraged Confederacy knew that Lincoln had given the war a new meaning. It was no longer just about the preservation of the Union. Now, it was about creating a new union, washed clean of its original sin. A union without slavery. Wow, that 30 minutes passed by like it was nothing. This guy is incredible, man. How he does his research and how he does his videos is actually, like, you've got to applaud it because it's just, it's so good, man. It's so, like, so, like, interesting to watch and you just got to respect how he makes his videos, man. But yeah, there's still part two to come, and that's 22 minutes long, so there's still a whole load to go through. Man, I got myself in a rabbit hole, but I am not complaining. I love this, man. I love learning about these sort of things that otherwise I probably wouldn't really see. But like, thanks to you guys suggesting this sort of stuff and continuously asking me to do these reactions, we're here and I'm learning stuff about the world, man, not just about the UK's history. I'm liking the fact that I'm learning about history to do with just how the sort of like, just other countries, like the US, like to see like, how certain things happen, just all these things, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this, man. I really do enjoy these reactions. These history ones are really, like, fun to do, and the the support and, like, the sort of... Well, yeah, just the support on these reactions is so, so appreciated, man. I'm just glad Lincoln's father didn't beat him severely. Fuck sake. I'm guessing foreshadowing. Oh, my God, I'm awesome. Petition for oversimplified to be part of, official part of US history curriculum. I second that, you know what? I second that. Even Not even just the US, UK, man. This guy, if I was in school to watch this guy, I would be I would be hooked. I would be in school every day. I wouldn't be skiving certain days. I would be in school every day to watch this. I swear to God. He makes it fun. He makes it interesting. Class channel, man. It's cereal with soup. Angry and intensifies. The Confederates could have won if they had used Skillshare. <laughs> oh, man. French tax collector. Did he buy an old VPN this year? French mother. What? No, he's only nine. Ta de Tax collector, uh oh, there's tax for that, fuck's sake. What is it babies do again? Wow, I'm a good baby. <laughs> Confederate States breaks away, United States dude, uncle. Dude, uncle. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. It's a long one, I mean, still got more to do. And when I do part two, which will probably be in the next couple of days, I like sort of leaving a bit of time in between to just sort of settle it down. Comment under that one, and even under this this one, what else you'd like to do to do about history, maybe oversimplified or other channels. There's this suggestion that, suggestion, I can't say it, suggestion. That sounds weird to me now, suggestion. People are saying, what's the video called? The entire world, I guess, something like that. I don't know the actual title for it, but people have been suggesting that, and the entire world in, I don't know what the title is, it's something along the lines of that, but people are suggesting that, so maybe I can do that in future. Don't know what that's going to entail, but I'm loving the videos that you guys are suggesting so far, so I'm not going to complain. I know it's going to be a banger, but hopefully you guys enjoyed this reaction. Until next time, like, subscribe.